Hello and welcome to That's Esther. Thank you for all your letters and emails since our last program. Our special guest today is an international star, Michael Crawford. Oh, it's, it's such a thrill. It's a great thrill to be here. Thank you. I suppose I first fell in love with you when you were Frank Spencer. Now, how was he born? <laughs> well, um, it, it, it was actually this, on a street corner in Clapham. It, it was a, there was an old couple, a uh, youngish guy, old woman, standing at the, the street corner waiting for the lights to change. And I was in a car of the lights, they were red, and they stood and they looked at the lights and the light said, walk. And they looked at each other and they looked up at the light and they wobbled on their feet a little like Laurel and Hardy and then they looked back at each other and it went to change to wait and the lights went green and all the traffic started. They looked at each other and stepped straight out into the road. And I just thought it was one of the funniest things. Their timing to uh, build up to that was uh, one of the funniest things I'd seen. And they that, survived, did they? They survived and that was the first. Yes, but you heard the noise. It's that cartoon noise of... <laughs> cars hitting and and they just are oblivious and walked across the road well thank you for joining us also today we're going to look at a new kind of bullying using text messages so many children now have their own mobile phones but text messaging can make their lives a misery we'll find out if anything can be done to prevent it and Cheryl Gascoigne goes to Northern Ireland for us to meet some wonderful shoppers supporting our giving tree providing presents for children who will spend this Christmas in a women's refuge. But first, Michael Crawford. Now, I hate to show off, not like me, as you know, <laughs> but I was at the first night of the Phantom of the Opera, and it looked perfectly smooth, wonderful production, of course, um, but from your book there seemed to have been the occasional glitch on the way there. Yes, that, well, it was very, very complicated production. Yeah. And of course, they, the, the, the most uh, accidental things, a, a, accidents never happen at a good time, do they? Yeah. And, and uh, they always, uh, it happened on the opening night that the boat uh, ran amok. The man operating the boat had one of those little toy things that, you know, youngsters have with their remote control, remote control uh -huh. to, 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 like the size of a CD. Yeah to control the, this great big two and a half ton piece of metal that we're sitting in as a gondola. And it suddenly swings round and starts to go towards the audience like this. And we, we ended up three inches from the edge uh, and I leapt out and grabbed Sarah and pulled her free and the, the, the motor was heating up, her dress was smoking. Uh, there was sort of <laughs> this burnt chiffon look she had <laughs> on that. And I pulled the boat and put it in the position it was supposed to be. And I was completely out of breath and went into the beginning of, and I go, <gasps> slowly, <gasps> gently, night. And I couldn't breathe. And afterwards, Andrew came around and said, I love the way you sang music at night tonight. He said, it was so, so sensual. He said, I love the breathy quality. Breathy quality. It was like a dog with asthma. I was in a terrible state. Which now, gives you the most pleasure, having created a character like Frank Spencer and made everybody laugh and a new generation laughing now, or being the straight singer? Which do you like? Um, I couldn't. I couldn't say I would have missed any of them because every every venture that is a success, as for anyone, I think is is so exciting. And always now is important. It's, it's, it's the fact that something is happening for you right now, if you want it to. Now, one of the things I think people do know about you is that you have had a very tough childhood and a lot of painful experiences. We're going to talk in a moment about your interest uh, in the NSPCC's campaign. But uh, we've done a, a report about bullying, and, and bullying is something you experienced as a child, didn't you? Yes, um, I did. It was it was it was sort of varied. Um, it was I was very small as a child, um, and uh, anybody saw any of the earlier things, even Frank Spencer, I was very skinny, and I was uh, waif-like as a child. So therefore, any kind of physical uh, difference that you have is is obviously a, a fodder for other children mm -hmm. if they feel so inclined. 
and, right. and it, this certainly, without a shadow of a doubt, can stay mm. with a child for the rest of his life. Well, it's a tragic story, well, Michael, isn't it? Um, I think the thing that is changing since you were bullied yourself as a child is that people don't think they have to keep it to themselves. Children do recognize that they can ask for help and should ask for help. They may do. I still feel it's like the figures one reads about child abuse or bullying. I don't think we see the half of them. Mm. And no matter if schools have bullying policies, mm. they're absolutely useless unless they're implemented. And I hear time and time again that they're not implemented correctly. And so the child or children will suffer in an ongoing fashion. And children need, they need people to look up to and admire. And I wanted that when I was at school. I wanted teachers to look up to and admire. And, and the, the, some of the headmasters, some of the, the way these schools or headmistresses are run, they don't take that responsibility. They, they don't want their funding to, uh, to be affected or the governors to feel there are drugs in their schools. Well, there are drugs in schools. And, we, uh, and I, I mean, I personally have had a lot of youngsters who, who I know have been affected in this way and then were bullied because they blew a whistle on something. And th 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 they still won't talk about it now. Well, we do produce a fact sheet. This is it. And on this you'll find details of other schemes like the BT Nuisance Bureau you can get in touch with if you do get text message bullying and some of the peer support schemes which perhaps you'd like to adopt in your school. So, still to come we'll have more from Michael Crawford and Cheryl Gascoigne reporting on our Giving Tree scheme from Northern Ireland. Join us again in just a moment. Welcome back. Michael Crawford is still with us. Talking now about your interest in the NSPCC, who are running a big campaign against child abuse called the Full Stop Campaign. How did you get involved with it, Michael? Well, I, 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 I've been uh, interested in, in uh, child care for quite a few years. and uh, Because? Just because of my own way of my, my own youth and uh, the, the I, I had experienced uh, physical abuse at, at, at home. Tell us a bit about that. Uh, I had a, a, a stepfather who was uh, of a violent nature and um, just would have a terrible temper. You witnessed this it, as a child? Yes, if, if, if my mother didn't do something um, at, at the right time or the tea wasn't ready or something. Um, he would he he would go, and I was about six, uh, five, six, and I remember uh, many occasions standing in front of her and and trying to protect her while he was hitting her, and uh, there, there was uh, uh, I I don't know it's something you lived with you didn't you didn't think we 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 talked at one point I remember very clearly I talked about running away with my mother at one point. But in those days, there was nowhere to run. I mean, you could, where would you run to? You would go and, she would go to live with her mother. Yeah. Well, what would we do? How would we live? There was no way to live. And also, um, it'll be all right. Everything will be all right. You just, you know, it's, you see it on television shows at the moment where there are, where there are wife beaters and, and there's this crazed look comes over someone and you think, you look at the woman and think, why are you still there? You get so mad at the screen with these fictitious characters and you suddenly think that was my life. Did it's... you ever ask for help, Michael, when you were little? No. No, I was, I was mainly concerned with looking after my mother. You survived amazingly when you think how much you endured, both the violence at home and then the violence at school. When you read the cases that you have read and mm. the cases that we, we look at, mm. Our lives are a joy. Our li we are so lucky. We are so fortunate. But you've got to be aware that you're fortunate and you must give back. You've got to do something. 
Hence, for these children that, that don't have anything. Hence the involvement with the Full Stop campaign. And you, you can't stop. There's not enough you can do. Well, we'd like you to have a look at an idea which um, we think is a very good one at Christmas time. It's called The Giving Tree. And the aim of it is to help children who were just in the situation that you yourself were in, children who have experienced firsthand violence at home, but whose mums have managed to escape to refuges. There aren't enough around the country, they aren't properly funded, and these families are often extremely poor. So at Christmas time, our giving tree is a way of giving those children who've lived through so much pain the present they most want. Michael, do you think this is a good idea? I think it's a terrific idea, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's one way of making, um, making a child's dream come true. Yes, I think it's a lovely idea. Well, thank you so much for your support. I'll be there. Excellent. Thank you for joining us. You'll find all the details of our giving tree on our fact sheet and everything else we've covered. We'll tell you how to get hold of one of these in a moment. Thank you to Michael. Goodbye. <laughs>